Do, 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 do. Is, is, this, is this music copyright? Uh, it, it probably is, yes, because it's yeah. uh, Final Fantasy VII. All right, looks like we are are broadcasting to Twitch even, so this might even be this might even actually work. Uh oh, we have a, a lost notebook. Well, in the meantime, welcome to those who might be watching the stream. I don't know if there's anybody uh, live at the moment, aside from me. That's okay. You're welcome to join us live on Sundays at 4 o'clock Atlantic for Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign. Uh, currently in an alternative form. This is a, the alt game, as we've informally referred to it, or the Great Confusion, which was name was chosen for, uh, for uh, kind of story reasons, but it, it ends up being very true in reality as well as one of our players can't uh, can't make on a regular basis. So the remainder players have made new characters in a setting 1,000 years approximately before the setting they're currently in. Approximately. I don't remember what the actual year is. I'll figure that out later. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, your host, GM, and uh, lost soul trying to uh, find my way back home. I have my players in front of me. Guys, uh, introduce yourselves and your characters, starting with Pat on my left. Hi, my name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh Illusionist. He has business cards and everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Marie. I found my notebook, and I'm playing Annie. Awesome. Hey, I'm Max, and I'm playing a Medrek Half-Orc half Cleric. Cleric of Ignis, one of the uh, yep. created gods. In there be fire. Peculiar little scenario. So, as we left off last time, uh, there's the other thing that's happening to me is I no longer am taking the notes that I needed to, so I'm just going to make this all up as I go along. But you found yourselves looking around, casting about for a bit of work to be done in the small town of Eiltvater in the uh, bay uh, in Silvermoon Bay on the coast of Eskis. The western coast, I believe it was, of Eskis. And uh, found a notice that the farmer, uh, one Rex Winthrop, uh, was complaining about missing cows and needed someone to help round them up. On your way out to the Winthrop farm, you encountered what turned out to be an ambush. A, a tree was across the road blocking path, and as you paused to take, take a look at it, you were ambushed by several bandits who seem to have a particular message. Don't mess with the diamond. In the prehistory of the campaign, the diamond was ultimately who was expected to be for blame, I guess. The the uh, mastermind, if you will, behind a certain plot to ruin an inn's uh, uh, favor, to ruin their reputation, that inn being the three bells, which you actually saved being overrun by rats. Well, I three rats, technically, but they were well-timed, well-placed rats, due to a hat of vermin summoning. After uh, dismissing or dispatching uh, the, uh, the bandits, uh, one of whom uh, died, but the others managed to, to scrape away with their lives, and they were, they were booting, it, booting it like you wouldn't believe. Uh, one of them, having uh, uh, died, you uh, buried him by the roadside under a pile of stones after uh, finding nothing much more than a few coins on him. You then resumed the, the way out to the Wintrup farm. One of the old farmer roads uh, meandered through the woods, probably created as much by the uh, wagons, which carried goods and services back and forth, workers out to the farms, <clears throat> workers out to the farms and goods from the farms, uh, but has to contend with things like large rocks and trees that stubbornly will not move, so it's not exactly a straight road. The day grew increasingly cloudy and gray until finally you found yourselves at the Winthrop farm. Uh, rain starting to set in heavily. On the deck of the farm, you found the farmer himself, one uh, elderly Rex Winthrop and his uh, lovely wife, Alma, who took you inside for a small meal and discuss what problem they're having. During that discussion, uh, Rex indicated that a couple of cows had simply gone missing. They were out in the fields one day in uh, places where he knew uh, they had been many times before, wasn't really worried about them. No sign of animals taking them off, so he feels like someone had poached a couple of his uh, cows. 
however, Alma had another story to relate, which is that she had been in the barn one late night and had been spooked, we might say, by seeing some sort of strange shadow forming up in the edge of the, uh, the barn. The shadow seemed to, to vanish when the light was turned to it. She didn't think too much of it, but it shook her enough that she mentioned it. So, after hearing that story, you thought, let's go ahead and take a look at the livestock and at the barn. Rex led you out to the barn, and there was the livestock. Many cows, many sheep, <coughs> which are going to, in a moment, look a lot like uh, like rams and uh, goats, because that's the all I icons I happen to have. Uh, and while you were there, the storm grew to its zenith, crashing lightning overhead, fly, uh, uh, brightening up the spot from time to time. And in one of those crashes, a great, large, darkened shadow seemed to hover over in the corner of the barn, diving directly into one of the cows, who shuddered and fell over, dead. You rushed over to the cow. And that's where we're going to start things. We never get to say that often enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, let's see if I can get this done properly. What kind of lighting do we have? Is it just torchlight? Because it's so thick with clouds overhead, it's basically just torchlight. I'm going to switch to another screen here. Hopefully everything's still working on this screen as the technical issues are causing weirdness to happen. Uh, and I'm going to take us over to the Winthrop Farm. All of you should see that if you're in Roll20 right now. Or uh, yep. you have the master view on my screen as well. I put you kind of roughly in the barn. Nowhere in particular uh, compared to... Uh, there was no particular marching order, so I kind of scattered you amongst the barn. Uh, and Rex is uh, displayed in the middle. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh, clearly someone is upset about the cow so um, just to describe the barn briefly it is a fairly long but low barn uh, it's only about uh, uh, about 30 feet up to its apex in the middle it's kind of a um, not exactly an uh, an A-frame because it doesn't go all the way down to the ground but a, a peaked roof made of wood with some stone foundation, large uh, curved arches over the main doors at the front. And you can see as you pass all the way through to the back, there's a another uh, pair of double doors that lead to another small building on the back. Uh, the uh, It is an old, old barn, probably patched numerous times over many, many uh, generations perhaps, uh, but certainly well built. Very dim inside. Uh, Winthrop himself has a uh, a, uh, a lantern. I believe that uh, Annie also had her bullseye lantern out. Uh, I'm uh, not hooded. Hooded lantern. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to use uh, lighting in this particular area, uh, just because I didn't have enough time to put it in on this particular map. Uh, but you can see that there are sort of half walls around you anyway. Uh, and then small openings where uh, cows are brought in and out. Hopefully you can see that on the map. So under, other than those two lamps, there's no other lighting in the room? No other direct lighting, no. There's some lighting coming from the flashes of lightning outside through the front doors, but that's about it. Yeah. I actually have a lantern as well. Okay. Are we rolling initiative right now? Or Because if not, then Medrek is going to pop the uh, light cantrip. <laughs> uh well, that is kind of up to you as you see this this thing manifested in the corner, uh, kind of hovering over the, the cow. You guys had kind of looked over towards the cow, but not actually. I, I think we had said something about you guys going over to see it, but I'm going to back that up a little bit because uh, you probably wouldn't have rushed in if you see some entity sitting there. Uh, it seems to be kind of hovering. It As the lights get turned on it, um, there is the distinct darkness that swells around a sort of humanoid shape. Uh, you can't really see its, its feet because it's, it's kind of behind the interior wall there. But all the cows in that pen are definitely getting nervous and starting to move uh, away from that and possibly going to stampede in some way or even crush themselves. 
what do you guys do? Hmm. I'll touch my Warhammer and cast the Light Cantrip and hold it up to the creature or whatever is standing on top of the cow and slowly move towards it. Okay. Um, as soon as you you uh, you expend the spell, um, brilliant flames kind of roar up around your 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 uh, warhammer, uh, and subsiding down to the gentle glow of the light spell itself. It has a distinct, almost uh, a flame-like effect around it, though. Rather than just being a point of glowing, they are sort of roiling flames, uh, but concentrated just on the edges. And it has no actual heat of its own, but it does have an impressive look on it. As soon as you do that, uh, the creature lets out a wail. And uh, we're going to have the wail, and then I will uh, roll for initiative. So... But I don't want to beat up a whale. <laughs> uh, each of you has to make a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom is my jam. I forget what the modifier is. I guess I got too many pieces of paper scattered all over the place. 18. 18, okay. 13. And from Medric. Oh, I see the roll there now. 15. Calculating. I forgot. I almost, I almost forgot. I had to add my proficiency bonus to it. No worries. Uh, okay. So only Silas. Um, for you, this this scream of despair rolls around the room. Oh, I will have uh, Rex roll badly. Um, as uh, the scream rolls around the room, all of the cows just stand still. And you can see them now. All their muscles are kind of tensing and twitching. It's almost as though they are fighting against something, but at the same time, utterly incapable of even comprehending the despair they're he hearing. For you, Silas, it washes over you. And you feel your eyes going absolutely bright, a brilliant, wide, saucer-like size as uh, it, it touches deep into your soul. And you feel almost this, this backlash happening from, from deep in there. You feel like a, an element beyond you has also noted the passage of this sound. You are frightened for the next minute. Okay. Um, you will get a chance to repeat that saving throw at the end of your turn. Okay. Uh, but now we can roll initiative. Uh, and with frightened, you are at disadvantage for an ability check, including uh, initiative. I won't be using the initiative tracker on, uh, on roll 20 just yet. Last week I was having so many issues with everything that I'm reverting back to paper to at least get my flow going, if nothing else. Um, hey, yo. So I got an 11. Okay. 27. Similar, 20. Similarly, Rex is also uh, uh, stock still. So we'll wait for him. Ooh, that's not good. All right, sorry, I need to... Uh, okay. All right, I've got now too many windows up. So we've got Silas with 13 and that 20. Uh, what's your initiative bonus, uh, Medric? Zero. Zero, okay. Yeah, well, he's I, not the most dexterous guy. <laughs> that, that keeps it uh, easier. And twenty seven not twenty from uh Annie as well, making twenty seven. Nice. Twenty seven is your initiative? That's that's I have the so that gives a plus five to initiative. Oh, that's bonkers. I love it. That's great. All right. 
it's plus five to initiative. I can't be surprised uh, as long as I'm conscious and uh, enemies don't get advantage from not being seen by me. Right. Is that the observant feat or is that mastermind stuff that gives you? No, uh, no it's, it's a feat. It's alertness. Alertness. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. That's, that's, I love it. That's, that's fantastic. Well, uh, Annie, you survey the situation. You see the cows in that space, which looked like they were going to tense up and, and bolt in any direction. Tense up, but in fact, hold still. Beside you, you also note that uh, Silas has had a similar reaction, as has Rex. But this creature hovers in the corner. The walls that are separating the interior pens, by the way, are only about three feet tall. They're just meant to keep the cows and the and the uh, sheep from uh, moving about everywhere. <clears throat> gotcha. Sorry, I didn't register what you said about the pens. The the interior walls of the pens are only about three feet high. Okay, so they can be stepped over. They can be l vaulted over. It's not quite ste stepping, but yeah. Medrick can step uh, over them because he's tall. So you can either, and, and for those... As is typical, you can either make an athletics or acrobatics roll to do it without spending extra movement, or take the extra movement like difficult terrain to get over it. Um, so I see this thing in the corner here. That's right. Kind of hovering over a, a, a dead, well, presumably dead cow. It's not looking alive, let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, I am going to... Uh, hmm, I might as well just go over and you know, hit it with a rapier. Okay. You're still carrying the lantern? Yep. Okay. As you move closer and get closer up to it, as the light from the lantern washes over it, you make out a distinct form in the center. It looks much smaller than the overall shadow, which seems to uh, undulate and twist and turn like a, a, a semi-unstable cloud whirling and twisting around it. Make your attack. 16. 16. That is a hit as you poke inward towards it. For seven damage. Okay. Uh, the rapier pierces the shadow, pierces this cloud, and seems to come up against something semi-substantial. It moves through and your thrust carries you a little further than you expected as it feels like you've poked into something that's not entirely there. Uh, for a moment, uh, actually not yet, uh, but you do have a feeling that while you poked into it, it did not uh, strike something entirely solid. Cool. Um, I'm going to then disengage as a bonus action. Okay. And get back to where I was. All right. Um, what's your movement? 30. So okay. I would be able to get here. So, uh, yeah, yeah. if you're not taking the extra roll to jump, to vault over it, just sort of climbing over it and backing away. Uh, it kind I of... I mean, would, would, it be a, uh, would it be an action to do the roll to jump no. over it? No, it's just basically you either take the roll and uh, possibly not have to do the additional movement or you just take the extra movement. Yeah, I'll just take the extra movement. Okay. It kind of lashes out at you a little bit as you move away, but uh, doesn't come anywhere near hitting you. <laughs> Next up is Medric. All right. I'll move towards it a little bit. As soon as I can pick up my character. There we go. Okay. It should work. Can you uh, can you move it? No. Okay, just a second. Make sure that I've got this. Um, oh. Yeah, okay. I actually did create a character sheet for it, but you haven't been using the character sheet because I wasn't assigned to you yet. Okay. Just one second. All right. Cool, because I had just offered Nax to to set that up for him if you wanted. There we go. You did? Yeah, I, ju I just sent you a Facebook message. Oh, okay. Because I forgot. <laughs> okay, you Wait, should be just... able to move that now. Excellent. Can you move it? No. <laughs> uh, technical issues. 
You you might need to assign who can move the token. It's con no, that's that's Silas. I'm looking at the wrong token. That would be part of it. Um, it should be assigned by the character, and the character is controlled by uh, by Nax. You may need to reload roll okay. twenty for that to come into effect. Uh, you may need to just open the character sheet in your journal. That's true too. Character sheet. All right. No. Anyway, I'm, I will move to the square space between Annie and the shadow, like still on this side of the three foot wall. That one? Okay. Yeah, that, that one. What I will do is I will, whoops. Yeah, I'm Annie now. Sorry, I, I clicked the wrong thing. Just <laughs> Uh, you're muted, Pat. All right, now you should be able to move this again. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. One, two, three, four. Five. So that puts me in range. Uh, yes, although you are kind of poking over the, the three foot. Uh, uh, there, yeah. just keep that in mind. But my arms are like way higher up than three feet, so that works. <laughs> oh, that's true, actually, especially because you're a half orc and tall. Okay, and where's the looking for my numbers? I will swing the war hammer at its face or at its general direction. Okay. So to hit, is, is it my strength bonus plus my proficiency bonus? Yes. Okay, just wanted to make sure. That's definitely a hit. Smack! Okay. And... More damage. But I guess I'm using it one-handed right now, so it's d8. That's plus your strength as well. Okay. Strength, but not proficiency. You gotcha. Right. Like, I still have Zacchaeus' numbers in my mind, and switching over has taken a while. <laughs> I think Zacchaeus' number is pretty close at this point. Not for strength, I don't know. <laughs> oh, maybe not, yeah. Ten points, nice. And the light is right in his face now. Uh, let's see. As you as well note that the weapon seems to pass almost clear through without hitting much it was more like you hit something like water where it slows it down but there's no no uh, uh strong contact okay uh, this and uh point. yeah is it extra angry because the light is that much closer to his face now uh no but uh make a perception check perception oh, that is the same as zacchaeus's numbers okay Thirteen. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Um, as the the bright um, warhammer swings on through it, you kind of see the shadows moving around it, and just sort of where you hit, it's almost as though the shadows had pulled back enough that you can see. Uh, a, a thin, waifish body in the center of all these shadows. Okay. And you're staying where you're at? Yeah, I use my maximum movement. Okay. Silas? You are frightened still, but you can make the roll at the end of your turn. Uh, you can't move any closer to it. Um, you're muted. Did I see the uh, thin wafish form in the middle? No. Okay. <laughs> well, I am going to study it then. Okay. Uh, make a perception check. Still a disadvantage because you are still frightened. Where? Oh, yeah. Six. 
Unfortunately, from where you are right now, uh, uh, Medrick is sort of in the way of seeing too much, and uh, Annie right beside him as well. Uh, weirdly enough, the bright light that both of them are carrying uh, kind of obscures your view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's it for my turn. Okay. Make your wisdom saving throw. Wow. Pair of 21s. Woo! In kind of calming your mind and that that inner sense of something going on, uh, you find yourself strengthened. And there's almost a, a secondary curiosity that grows in you. After that initial shock of, of this thing uh, existing, um, you're sort of propelled forward, um, almost not by your own accord. Uh, let's see. That makes it's it... It's not so scary when the light's been brought to it. It's turn. Um, Medric, you see in front of it as the shadows grow and solidify uh, as it uh, seems to twist and turn. And again, there's this sort of sense of an inner being now almost entirely obscured, but the outer being not exactly the same shape. Um, and it sort of lengthens and, uh, and twists and turns as this spiral of shadow comes twisting at you and sort of slams into you or tries to. Uh, let's see if I can, I can roll here. And we'll see if I can remember how to type roll. Okay. Uh, oh man! Total of yeah. twenty. Uh, yes. So the the spiral uh, spins out towards you. This could be really bad. Let's see how that bad that gets. Uh, and you feel this this energy swirling in around you and piercing in through your armor and cold seeps in around you as you take 15 points of necrotic damage. <sighs> and it's almost as though the life feels like it's been drained out of you. In fact, you can kind of see a, a sort of silvery spark a, a reversing back up along the darkened spiral into the the space of darkness, which seems to grow a little bit as it as that's it hits. True. Uh that's its turn. Rex. Rex is going to move. He's <laughs> running away. Rex is definitely running away. Let's see here. Uh there's the beginning of his running away. Then there's the rest of his running away as he almost makes it out of the building. Uh, turning and running and ooh ooh that's not good he's definitely uh, uh, going to continue his running he's away he's not only going to continue his running uh, <laughs> as he passes by you Silas you notice a, a dark stain forming around his legs or <laughs> dark, about his pants he's, he's completely and utterly lost it uh, his eyes are wide and you actually note uh, a bit of, of uh, oh yeah he did do that badly you note that the the hair which he had, which had been sort of salt and pepper, gray and silver and white, is now pure white. Uh, that's the end of his turn. Mm -hmm. Back to the top. Annie. Hello. Um, just a question I posted in the chat. Uh, can you guys hear the kids yelling? I had not noticed any. Okay, cool. I don't want to close the window because it's really warm in here. <laughs> um... So, um, if non-magical attacks don't seem to be hurting it much, I'm not very useful. Um, question. Mm -hmm. Can I use my bonus action and my action to help so I can help Medric and then Silas? No, bonus action doesn't have any helping with it. No, with my master of tactics, I do. Sorry, what is the the ability? Uh, For masterminds uh, helping, you can help as a bonus action. Okay, let me just check that real quick. I, I I just posted it in the the chat. 
Oh, then it is only a bonus action. You can't use an action for it. No, it's, you can use the help action as a bonus action. You don't have oh, to. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's kind of like the, oh, the druid okay. wild tree can use bonus it, it as a bonus action, but can still use it as an right, action. Right, because help can be used as a normal action. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't see a problem with that. Okay, so uh, I don't have much that I can do to help uh, action-wise. Uh, I do need to be within five feet of it to be able to do the action one. Uh, oh, no. No, 30 feet. No. I can be within 30 feet. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to uh, go to here. This is a new rogue subclass I'd never seen before. This is kind of neat. Yeah, it's it's a fun one. Uh, it's one that I've wanted to do for a while. I think it's from Storm Coast Thunder, maybe. Yeah, uh, Xanathar's is where I saw it. Xanathar. It, it might have started in Storm Coast. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. So I will give each of you the help action. So describe what that looks like. What are you doing? Uh, I'll explain to them the little thing that I saw in the middle of it, and that I don't feel I can uh, I can hurt it but magic might hurt it. Okay. Like, kind of direct what to do. All right. Silas snapped out of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, hope action advantage to attack the shadow. All right, with a bit of uh, good advice. Uh, that means Medric. You heard, kind of confirming what you had seen before, that at the center there is something different. Um, but uh, that bit of extra boosted advice uh, seems to carry uh, strength for your blade, or your uh, Warhammer, I should say. Medrick, you're up. All right. How Can I determine how bad the uh, wispy form inside of it looks? You'd have to study it. Oh, and it, no kind of, it kind of obscured over... And it was almost as though you had sort of pierced inside to see a little bit of it, but then it got quickly covered over. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty, well, cold after that last attack and, like, pretty ouch as well. So, it... so Medric's eyes are going to glow orange, kind of, and fire is going to materialize around him and along with light. And he's going to use a uh, Channel Divinity, Glory of Midday, to, uh, you know, bring some light to this asshole darkness <laughs> okay so also does that count as a cleric spell because it's a channel divinity no it's not a spell okay so i don't take fire damage <laughs> no. so it takes 2d6 plus 3 radiant damage which i will roll or any hostile creature anyway so it does require a spell attack roll okay which you have okay. advantage on which you do have advantage cool. on. yep Spell attack is just, it's just my wisdom plus proficiency. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, your normal spell attack roll. That's one. That hits. And the second one is not a 20, but okay. That hits. Fish for uh, It is uh, three rays, so three attacks. There it is? Hmm? Yeah, Glory of Midday is three rays of pure sunlight. Okay. Oh. oh, okay, so I got to roll another one. You got to roll four more, or unless it's the only, only it's the first one. Three attack there. rolls. You've rolled two attack rolls. Yes, but he has advantage on them. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Uh, does he only have advantage on the first one, or all three? Uh, I think it's the first one. We're going to have to double check on that later but otherwise that gets really powerful okay. uh, all of a sudden uh, second one misses uh, third one hits okay and you're choosing radiant damage yeah okay first ray is oh d6 is behave please and the third ray is, drum roll, oh my god. Well, it's still 15 radiant. So. Mm. 
the D6 could have done a better job. <laughs> mm. um, Ooh, it erupts all over the place, preferably in its face. Maybe I have a different copy, but my copy says D8s, not D6s. No, mine says D6s. Oh, maybe I didn't change this part. Okay. I will go with Can I reroll the D8s? <laughs> no, no. That's, that, I'm going to, I'll update my, my, car, my copy. Okay. Uh, okay, so seven and eight to so fifteen. Yeah. All right. Um. So I hope, I'm hoping that being a, it being a being of of darkness, it'll get extra affected by light. A good chance of it. Okay. All right. So you, uh, what is the holy symbol? It's the one, it's the, the, the star you have on yeah. uh, a necklace around your neck, right? Mm -hmm. So you kind of reach in, hold that up in front of you, and the rest of you notice that it is as though the sun has risen now within this room. Brilliant light, uh, nearly blinding light, uh, flows outward from uh, Medric in all directions. Uh, and then three, coalescing in three beams, one that heads right out the door, Kind of in the wrong direction, but it's the temporary illuminates everything. The other two seem to hone in on the creature in front of you. Uh, and then there's a sort of burst of energy as the beams then um, sort of almost explode and wash over all that's there. Uh, after you kind of blink a little bit, you look again towards the creature and note two things. One, the shadow is much diminished, but not entirely destroyed. Uh, it is a, a, a almost uh, thin and paper-like now, where the shadow is spinning around in small clumps, tattered and and uh, torn, like um, like some uh, like a beast has taken a chunk out of a cloak and shredded ed edges of it. In the center now, though, you do make out the form of a young woman, and it looks to be elven from the uh, features of her ears. Um, released or revealed rather within the center core of this thing. Uh, her eyes are wide and, and uh, pupilless. Her clothes look like they are uh, 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 diaphanous and themselves kind of uh, uh, pale as her whole form seems to be pale. You can still see through her slightly. She looks uh, at you in shock and surprise. And then the, the final emotion is not the one you expected, and that is hope. In that instant, as this the shadow was dissipated around her, at least for a moment, she turns to you and in a voice that is human but distant, like the sound of someone screaming through a windstorm. Um, she turns to you. Please save me. Silas. You do okay. see the form now, and, and while the shadow seems to be gathering so much around her again, uh, it does seem to be mostly gone. Did everybody hear that? Yes. Okay. I'll dash up to there, and with a uh, particularly bewitching voice, uh, I make some... Uh, glowy gestures about myself and I am going to suggest to the shadow that it wants to leave the girl alone for a while that it should just leave okay. and it gets a wisdom save just looking something up here and it only needs to be the 13 I think so so that is suggestion Yes. Okay. Uh, your words seem to draw nothing but sad and hopeful looks from the uh, the woman suspended in this shadow. Okay. That's it for me. Uh, that is Silas. It's turn. It is going to try. What did I do with my dice? There they are. Yes. 
um, you see the shadows growing somewhat around her, and a, with an apologetic look, she does not move her arms, but the shadows seem to, to lurch forward once more, trying to go after Medric. Oh, wow. That's probably a hit. Probably did. How bad is Medric right now? This could be a pretty ending. Let's see how bad this gets. Uh, another 15 points. Wow. Of necrotic damage. As now the shadow seems to almost linger now, wrapping in a, in a strange swirling pattern about, around Medric and the creature. Uh, you're muted. Oh, man. <laughs> My best commentary went to the mute button. Anyway. But if I go to zero, then I get yep. relentless endurance, where I dropped one hit point instead. That's right. So as the, the energy seems to siphon life out of Medric directly, you see him crumble and then describe how this looks. What does this look when he, when he does this endurance? Uh, just out of curiosity, does he fall down and do I have to like get up for the next action or do I just like... No, you don't go to zero, you go to yeah, one. You're just, you're, you're falling in hit points to zero, not falling down. Okay. He's going to look like he's dropping and slumping over the railing or the short wall. And then leaning back, leaning back, leaning back, and then eyes closed, roll backwards, and then in his mind he sees, like, all these visions of fire, and it's like, no, it's not time yet. And, I don't know, psychic mushroom cloud, and <laughs> eyes snap open, and he just comes back. All right. Uh, well done. I was a lot closer than I thought. Right. Uh, as uh, as Medric uh, launches back up into a firm position, it does appear that flames lick over his body briefly, uh, almost seeming to leave an after image of those flames, even though it does not seem to be on fire. Uh, that is its turn. Now we have Rex. Ah. Uh, Rex, after this turn, <laughs> we'll stop running right now. <laughs> he has made it well out of the building at this point. Uh, I'm sorry, wife of mine. I forget her name. <laughs> Alma. All right. So I don't, right. I don't have to worry about him for the moment. So we'll back up the top. Annie. Um. You heard this plea, and yet despite the plea, the shadows seem to strike once more. I will. I will give Medric. Uh, I'll use my bonus action to give Medric advantage, and I'll take out my short bow. Okay, taking out the short mm -hmm. bow would be a free action, so you can attack if you like. Yeah. No. Ooh. Oh, no. The arrow goes sailing out the open door. Oh, sorry, I pressed twice. And then you readjust and think, if I had only fired a second later, I would have nailed it. Yep. Right, that is... Uh, and that is my turn. Okay, Medric, you can feel yourself weary right down to the bone. Another yep. strike like that, and Ignis will have you in his own court soon. Yeah, let's not do that right away. I'll cast Cure Wounds on myself because of reasons. Okay. <laughs> that kind of sounded like a threat, Ignis. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> One, two, three. It's only my wisdom modifier, right? Not wisdom for less proficiency for curing? Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, just sure. wisdom mod. Oh, stack pieces. Okay. Come on, rolling the dice. Hey, decent numbers. So that's plus nine. My marker just disappeared. Why you do this? It was in my hand. Make a perception check, Nax. 
have it's to got a good one. hide skill. It, it might be difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Didn't so you I... know pens have a natural 20 constantly on hiding? Yeah, passive hiding. <laughs> Guaranteeing that what, 20. They're great with the surprise attack. More than once, I've been like, there's a pen in my pocket. When did I put a pen in my pocket? All right. And for damage, I take... God damn it, Ignis, why? So I take three damage. As once again, he flares up on fire. I may change that. I reserve the right to adjust that. Okay. <laughs> to, to, to whether or not it affects cure wounds, because that is a bit of a of a nasty penalty. But it's an OG. I'm just glad uh, we got this. Um, our characters are level three, so it's halved. Not like yeah. I can't imagine this on a level one. It's like I heal you. <laughs> there will be. But I'm generally to, better off than I was. There in the previous ways to, to to mitigate that inside a temple, but yeah. Uh, and I'll raise my shield. Okay. Anticipating the next hit. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. So you're kind of t turtling up a little bit. Yeah. All right. I can't disengage because I've already used my action, but you know. That's right. Hopefully if it hits again, well, hopefully it won't. But if it does, hopefully it's going to be less than 12. <laughs> uh, Silas. Okay. Well. Hmm. Silas really doesn't have anything he can do except possibly kill her, which is really not what he wants to do. I mean, illusions uh, are powerful. So one, two, three, and he wants to try to help her resist it. Okay, how does he do so it? Everyone, everyone sees. Uh, him, if he can, he's going to grab her shoulders and put his head to hers. And then he's going to think at her very hard uh, with uh, with uh, uh, messaging uh, that you can do this. You can push it away. You can be strong. Uh, basically, he's going to help her or try to give her a chance to break free. Okay. I like that. As you uh, pierce the shadow with your hands, you find it to be flimsy and insubstantial, but you can still feel its pressure against you. Everything inside is utterly cold. Um, you will take... Oof, where are we here? Hopefully not 15. <laughs> Three points of cold damage, uh, which is probably, as you suspect, what actually killed the cow at your feet. Is it just simply froze to death instantly? Um, but you feel a connection, and as you as you bring your head in it, um, you feel emboldened. You feel strengthened. You feel that something is speaking through you that recognizes this entity not as a an ally necessarily, but as something curious. You can feel that twist and turn within your soul. It's turn. You see her eyes open wide next to your own Silas. Ooh. Um, and then there's a, a grim determination that sets across her face. She shakes and twists her, her uh, shoulders and her arms, almost as though she's trying to physically thrash away from this thing, you see the shadow kind of gather up behind her. Now almost like a cloak, but more bald and, and looking like it's got uh, strange tendrils that are spinning off of it from time to time. But for the moment, it seems like it's unable to attack, and she seems to be winning. Doesn't nice. seem to be over, but it seems she seems to be winning. That's cool. Uh, Last it! <laughs> Rex is long gone. Uh, Annie, you Hello. also notice this this uh, this gathering behind her, a separate spot where if you were to strike it, you would no longer strike her. Um, I was trying to move my thing through the hangout. That's not going to work. <laughs> I've done that <laughs> multiple times. I have it on three screens here, and you know I've clicked on every single one of them so far. Yep. Um. 
I'm going to come one, two, three, four here. Uh, I will try to shoot it again with a short bow. Okay. Line up the shot. That hits. 15. Cool. For max damage, eight. Nice. You Ooh. notice as the arrow goes through, um, <clears throat> unlike when you pierced with the uh, with the rapier before, it seems to tear through this and leaving a small hole in its wake. The arrow does strike the wall on the far side, but it looks as though the hole is a, is a, is a satisfyingly large uh, uh, tear. Okay, and as a bonus action, I will give her advantage. Okay. You can do this! <laughs> is it is it simply that kind of encouragement, or, or how do you phrase it? It's going to be more like, you can do this. We've got you. Okay. With, we'll get you out of this. With any cheerleading on the side, and also probably emboldened somewhat by the actual strike, uh, it yes, is... Yes, I did something useful. It <laughs> is Medric's turn. Seeing where this is going, we're all helping her. Medric will cast Guidance. Oh, okay. Grab her shoulder, pushing through the shadow, and just scream while fire, like, surges out of his eyes a little bit. Banish the darkness! <laughs> nice. I like it. Uh, it's turned into, bring a, chill back up. It's turned into <laughs> kind of a, a group hug with occasional arrow. This is great. Uh, that's your action. Uh, yeah. Silas, what you did seemed to have worked, at least for the moment. Uh, well, okay. This might do something or it might not. I don't know. Um... Oh, no, wait, I can't. We haven't slept yet, have we? Nope. Oh, my God. I just found my dry erase marker, then I dropped it and it rolled under the desk. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Uh, Silas reaches his hand, uh, one of his hands, his left hand, uh, up towards it, while his right hand and his forehead are still on her. And uh, cast wait. Venomous Burst. Ooh. She only has a 10-foot range, but it's a little poison bolt. All right. I am new to rogue. I forgot to roll my sneak attack. Ah, yeah. Good oh, yeah. extra damage. Can I do that? You certainly can. Cool. Another seven. Nice. Nice. <laughs> uh, venomous burst. Here's an interesting question. Yeah, it's poison spray. Yep. No, no, that's that's fine. Uh. Yeah. Is it affected? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to figure out. Uh, unfortunately, it does not seem to be affected by the poison. As it just sort of sprays, there's a little little hissing as the as the spray uh, hits the interior of the uh, the barn's wall right there. Uh oh! I just poisoned the barn. All the cows are gonna die. <laughs> you better make sure the cows don't lick that corner. Let's put it that way. I'm sorry. I don't like I will try not to. That was Silas's turn. That means yep, it is going. her turn. Her turn with the guidance, with and the shout of help, and advantage. <laughs> yeah, she's got this. Well, she rolls all ones. Don't say it. <laughs> Didn't roll all ones. Uh, actually, rolled surprisingly well. Um, the, the look across from you now, Silas, is more determined than ever, and the brow kind of furrows with concentration. Uh, the shadows gather even smaller. Even the, the, the small tear hole seems to compress inward now. Um, I can't hold it for long. Please, release me. Kill it. You mean kill you? No, kill it. <laughs> Uh, but she manages to hold it from from striking again. Uh, Rex is almost home. Back around to the top to Annie. Okay. Uh, I will try to shoot it again. I will do okay. basically the same thing. It's tightened now almost to the size of a basketball, and little tendrils still kind of spark outward from it. Uh, it it's such a concentrated darkness at this particular moment it almost looks as though it's a hole in the universe cool i will try to shoot it again oh Definitely. yeah 23 i'd say that's pretty good 
<laughs> I'm gonna roll a sneak attack now. <laughs> okay. Another seven and then five. All right. So twelve. As the arrow speeds towards it, what does it look like as you destroy this pit of darkness? I imagining it kind of like dropping a rock into water and it's just like okay with a little extra English on the arrow as it spins ever so slightly off of the bow it kind of twists inward and then there is that 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 ripple outward as the the tightened ball of terrible energy gets shredded itself releasing now a, a different figure. I will actually try to remember how to get this onto the map. As the shadow is Oops. dissipated, leaving in its place. A pale figure. Again, elven in general out uh, stature. Standing, but not seeming to be entirely in contact with the ground. Solid, and yet solid in a way that a wind is solid. You can't really hold on to it. You can't really grab it, and yet you feel the force okay. pushing back against you. And she moves back away from Silas. You find your hands grasping almost nothing. And she heaves what you suspect is probably a reflexive sigh. Because you can almost entirely see through this being. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you all. I think it is gone for now. What was that? Are you, are you alive? I... And she kind of looks down at herself and kind of holds her hand out and turns it around, uh, looking kind of through her hand. I fear that I am not. I fear that... I do not know. I do not know what I am. But I fear that I am not living as such. And I can feel already the great pull to beyond. I will not be here long. But I will be what at peace. Was it was a being of pure evil. It, I don't... And she looks very, very puzzled. And her eyes go wide with, with, with nervousness and, and surprise and concern. I don't remember. I don't remember. Why don't I remember? I was... I was... The temple. I was at the temple. The temple of who? Do you remember? Well, try to remember. And she kind of Fair. looks nervously. I I don't. I should remember. I, better. I just came back from a war that I know nothing about. Something happened. Nobody knows what. We were... We were hiding? Sheltering? Preparing? Did you see the Baron? Like when that player asked me to the GM, to GM, did you did you see the Baron? You cut out a little bit. Oh, sorry, no. Um, preparing was the last. Preparing, time. okay. I, we were. There was something changing. We were going to sleep for a long time. We had to. Do you remember your name? Where you're from? My name. And her face kind of brightens. My name is Sedona. I remember my name is Sedona. But I don't remember where I'm from. I must not be from far. While it had its... Hold on me, I I could see things. 
and there, things like that. There were there were people. They had come into the temple. I was hiding, but I didn't want to. It made me hide. We watched them as they moved the rocks and opened the temple. The temple should not be open. The temple should not be. Why would I say that? Why would? And you don't remember what temple it was? I remember it was mine. I don't think it was far. But I'm not sure where I am. Um, I'm going to make a just a, a minor illusion in front of her of all the religious symbols I've seen in the, ta the town. Ignis, and then the arch for Tandu, and I guess Marina. Uh, I don't think there's a follow lily one. Um, do you recognize it? Are any of these yours? And she kind of nods. Uh, well, the arch is Tandu's. And that one, and she looks at the one of Marina. I believe that is Marina's, although it shares more similarity that I cannot describe. I'll pull out the Ignis amulet. Does this one ring a bell? Her eyes go wide. Yes, yes. Uh, it, no? it is. It is a Vignus. You are of Ignis. I feel like I don't know whether I should trust you. But you saved my life, so I must needs trust you for now. Why do you... I try my best to banish the darkness whenever I see it. And she nods. Yes. It was... It was not from this world. It did not have thoughts that I could understand, only desires. It, it wanted to bring something here, I itself, I think. Well, whatever it was, can't be allowed to do that. I'm sure we can all agree on this. I think that would probably be a bad idea, yes. Yeah. And she kind of looks... Uh, by the way, we are in, uh, on the island of Ascus, in the town of... I didn't write it down, and I can't pronounce it properly. Near a note. <laughs> Elf something. Elfwater. Elfwater. Sounds like ale water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, she kind of nods. Ascus. Yes. Yes, that is right. I am on Ascus. The temple is Oneskis. We cannot be far. I, I do not understand how we followed them. Uh, she kind of looks distant, kind of trying to remember. We followed them. Seem Sorry, go ahead. There seem to be some dark magics on you. I'm sure whatever you did was not your own doing. For how long do you think you're going to be around? And she kind of looks down and, and sees the, the animal below her, the, the cow, cold and dead, and kind of moves in this weird way where the body shape suggests that she's kneeling down, but it, it seems to twist and twirl almost as though insubstantial. There's a, a, a quick movement, more of a change in shape than an actual movement. And she puts her hand tentatively at first and then gently on the side of the, 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 the dead cow. I did this. I didn't... It did that. I was so cold. All I could think was it was warmer. And it was. I I, it was pretty cold. Uh, were there more than one of you or what you used to be? Because the, the reason why we're here, we're helping this farmer solve the mystery of why his cows keep dying and disappearing. Uh, I'm pretty sure we've been successful, but if there is more shadow creatures like what you used to be, we should be on the lookout. And also, do you know what was happening with the cows after? 
One question at a time, dude. <laughs> Your brackets are showing. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, she's kind of looking and, and sort of reaching out to sort of gently touch the, the fur of the cow and, and sort of gently, although you can see that her fingers don't entirely touch. Um, every time she gets closer, it sort of almost moves through. Uh, and yet there is a small ripple in the fur as she's, she's watching it and kind of looking distractedly at it, at, at, uh, at it. And your questions are kind of hitting the back of her, it seems, at the moment. But she does kind of absentmindedly uh, speak, Oh, yes, there were many of us at the temple. It was, a, it was a wonderful place, a place of healing and a place of life. And, and then it was, it had, and she kind of turns back, it had to go. Why? I don't remember. I saw those others. We watched them. First they had opened up part of the temple, but then seemed to be frustrated or, or, or something. They lit a fire. They lit a fire inside the temple. That's not allowed. But I guess it's a ruin now. And, and then they were, some of them went away and came back with, and she looks down at the cow again, with a few cows. They argued about them. And then, I think it was the leader. She told them to get rid of them. They kept one. They feasted on it. I won't be here long. I can How long, do you think? Could you take us to this temple? I think so. But you're you're wounded. I'm sorry. She kind of steps up, and again, it's not so much that she is standing up as a human would or, or a humanoid would, so much as the shape sort of shifts and changes and rises till she's standing in front of you, her hand tentatively reaching out towards the uh, still kind of darkened, uh, heavy purple and blue bruises along your neck where the, the, uh, the shadow had kind of corkscrewed into your being. I'm sorry. I could heal these words. You can? I could. I can too. So it's not a big deal. You are controlling your own mind. I was so confused. I didn't know. I didn't understand. We must go to the temple, but you cannot go there now. Why not? Or will you be here until tomorrow? I can try. I can try to hold on. If not, can you just give us directions from uh, Elfbader? I. I'm not sure, but I can. I can look for it tonight. And I will know the way. And if I can. And she, tentatively pushes against the wall. Right beside her. And then. Her brow furrows and her hand kind of stalls by the edge of the wall and it shudders slightly. I can touch things. I will leave a path if I do not return. But you, you've saved me. I would know your names. Who are you, strangers? My name is Medrick. Medric of Ignis. I, I go by Annie. And she looks at you and her head kind of tilts. You remind me of someone. But I don't I remember, remember whom. A lot of people. <laughs> Perhaps, and there's a lopsided smile, the first sort of positive emotion on her face. Perhaps that is it. I have seen few, I guess, for a while, and Still, there is something. And and you, who spoke encouragingly, 
I sense in you something deeper. Who are you? My name is Silas Marsh, ma'am. I do not know you. But, no, but I do not know you, unfortunately. But I thank you. Also, um, she's the only one that heard the, the uh, heard him talk to her. Nobody else would have. Right. Um, I'm. Oh, the other one, the older man. I have fear. I I made him afraid. He will need some. Yeah, probably. <laughs> we'll need some time. And you can see around her and around where you are, Silas, the the cows had kind of been slowly rousing uh, and then start to moo a little bit, uh, kind of tentatively. Um, looks like they're trying to, to stretch out their limbs and try to kind of... Uh, uh, move a little bit almost as though all of their muscles are, are are stiff and you kind of recognize that a little in yourself when the when the fear finally passed all the built up adrenaline in your in your body uh had kind of keyed it all high and then suddenly it gets all sore and you kind of get the same impression from a lot of them around you um but they don't seem to be afraid of her um, if anything some of them are kind of a little a couple of them closer curious and the others just go over and start to graze a little bit on some, sure. some. Uh, They're some moving. Hay. That's right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't start me down this path, man. I can go punting for hours. <laughs> so that's not good. I have to say, I didn't inherit my uncle's pun skills. I think I think that's probably one of those inheritances is best locked up in a chest and kept to themselves. Otherwise, you'll milk it for whatever you're worth. See, it's going to start, I tell you. <laughs> I was doing well. Um, but she starts to move among the cows, and they seem to respond to her. A little skittish at first, but then her gentle touch seems to uh, assure them. I, I grew up on a farm like this. I remember... And she kind of nostalgically uh, uh, smiling and, and kind of half to herself. We had so many cows. I named them all once. It wasn't a great idea because only a few were for milk and the rest were all going to food. But they lived a good life. Where did you grow up? Icro. I grew up in Icro. I remember. Well, it was a long time ago. It feels like a long time ago. You remember the year? No. No, I don't. The years didn't mean as much. Once you joined the temple. And she kind of seems lost in her own thoughts. Speaking of years, would Medrick remember like the year he was born, the year he went to this forgotten war? I mean, he certainly remembers the year he was born and, you know, childhood and growing up. A lot of that is, is easily brought to mind. It just feels like shortly after he joined the military, that seems to be missing. Okay. So, probably a couple of years. Okay. Is there anything we can do for you? I think you've done so much for me. You freed me from that thing. From the shadow man. I wish there was more I could do for you. Once I could heal, 
but I don't feel that connection anymore. It feels empty. I feel... I don't know. Confused. I'll connection? Switch. Was there a connection to fire by any chance? No, I, I don't think so. It was something else. It, it is as though all thoughts of it have been scraped away. I think many feel the same way. Do you? Yep. Do you feel this as well? Yes. I've joined the military to fight a war. And a few weeks ago, I was on a boat and heading to Elfbutter and there was a feeling of victory, but I remember nothing. Like sometimes I go to the taverns and the inns and I drink a little too much, but I, it's not like that kind of forgetting. It's years just makes a disappearing motion. <laughs> yes, th that's what I feel too. Like... Not as though I've been, I've forgotten something, just that I don't remember it, if that makes any sense. It's like something was ripped out of your mind. What about you guys, uh, Silas and Annie? Do you guys feel like anything was ripped out of your minds? I believe most people do. There is some strangeness. It's strange. I feel like I remember things, but don't. I'll turn back to uh, Sedona. It's like, see, I think it's everybody. I can ask Rex when we get back to his house. Oh. Is there anything I can do for him? I don't want to scare him again. And she looks down at her own body, but I, I don't think that he would... that my being would be of comfort to him. But I would like to try. Well, we could try. I mean, if he knows what happened and that the issue has been resolved, then... What do you guys think? It should be okay? Yeah. I mean, we could talk to him first. Would you? And his wife, because I think you gave his wife a scare the other day, too. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Elma will be glad to know that she's not imagining things or wasn't imagining. I tried to hold the shadow in. It was... It wanted so much. You did what you could. All I could feel was cold. And I thought it was just... the winter. But it was a cold within, like... Like, I don't live anymore. It's something undead? Something. And she kind of holds her hand up and... This sounds like the ghosts of tales. I never thought I'd be one. There must... I feel, I think I can feel my body. It must not have put, been put to rest properly. If you could do that, I could rest. Sure. We can do that, yes. Assuming that your deity was different than mine, so burning your body is also not the correct way, but I can assist you with whatever rights you require. Yes. Then I will go now, and I will find the temple. It cannot be too far. I remember roughly where those others were traveling. And I will return tomorrow. Or I will leave sign. Thank you. 
Thank you all. And I'll give her like a brief description of the path we took coming from Elf Butter. Okay. So she knows like roughly where she is. Okay. Or if Silas wants to do that because he's smarter. <laughs> yeah, we just kind of went straight then, took a right and straight again. And... <laughs> Thank you. And she kind of turns and moves over the wall, the low wall. But again, it is not as though she climbs over it so much as there's a body change shape that sort of flows over the top of it, reforming the shape of the body on the other side. And while she takes step by step by step outside out the door, it, it is almost as though the steps are, are badly synced in terms of the, the special effect, if you will, where it does not seem like her, her feet ever really con come in contact with the ground. And with that, she walks out into the still still raging storm overhead, although the lightning crashes have, have diminished tremendously. Well, that was interesting. That was the strangest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, same. I think she was a good person at heart, though. I mean, just possessed by something twisted and disgusting. Yes, some form of some form of shadow from outside, she said. Should we get back to Rex? Yes. Hopefully he's back at the house. A good idea. So you're heading straight back to the house? No. Yep. Yeah, I'll pick up my uh, my lantern. Okay. Uh, you head back to the house, and on the back porch, you can see Rex laying down on the porch. Uh, Alma with a large uh, 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 paper fan. Uh, kind of blowing as much air over his head as you, as you can. He's kind of holding his head and kind of moaning a little bit. You, you, you can't know. I mean, it was terrible. I, I don't understand. It was a terrible thing. I told you so. I told you there was a thing there, didn't I? And it seems like this conversation has been going this way for at least a moment or two. <coughs> as you come upon them, Alma looks up. Oh, you're all right. Thanks. Thank the heavens. We dealt with the situation. It was a girl's spirit that was possessed. And and Rex kind of rolls over a little bit uh, from where he's uh, lying on the on the on the uh, porch, and you can see now that in, indeed uh, his skin is almost a a lighter shade of white. And his hair has gone shocked entirely, completely white now. Uh, and he's kind of running his, his hand through his head. That was the most terrible thing I've seen in a generation. I don't remember how she he talks. Feels so bad. <laughs> she, she, she was trying to fight it. You're, you're cutting out. That's me also stumbling a little okay. bit in my own words. Um, you, you mean it's still out there? I don't remember how he talks. I really wish I did. I should look that up. Oh, well. The creature that was possessing her is gone. Yeah, the thing that was killing your cows is gone. And Alma kind of looks... Unless there's more than one of them, but I guess if we wait another night, we'll find out if that was the case. Alma kind of looks sad. Oh, the poor dear. And Rex kind of looks at her with this expression of disbelief. Poor dear. She scared my hair white. The you... creature that was possessing her did that. Oh, now, Rex, no. you know it was going to happen eventually anyway. That's not the point, the and you know it. Be... Sorry, go ahead. The cow should be fine, fine to butcher. It died of cold. And uh, Rex kind of sort of thinking it over. <laughs> it's like, I, 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 if, it, if, it, if it died of exposure... If it was out too cold, that would be all right. Might taste a bit funny. Well, the shadow thing didn't make, didn't carry the cow off with him, so we're with it. So yeah, at least you can profit from the cow. But and yeah, that thing was cold. And I'll like grab where my neck, where the thing like dug into me. <laughs> uh, 
Rex kind of sits up on the on the the deck. I think I have to have a little of the medicine, and kind of Alma shoots him a look, just a little bit, just a little bit. But I'm gonna need it. Uh, I'll need a strong back too. If uh, any of you might be able to give me a hand, I should get that uh, that poor beast into the cold room before before night. I can yeah, I'll help him out. Work it on tomorrow. Yeah, Silas looks over at Medrick. <laughs> <laughs> Volunteer hold. <laughs> Alma, go, on, go and fetch the door. medicine. <laughs> and Alma kind of sighs. Now, don't you move anywhere. Goes inside, comes back out a few seconds later with a uh, a, a dark um, glass bottle uh, and three small uh, glasses. Actually, sorry, five small glasses. And proceeds to pour you each a shot from this glass. Uh, Rex doesn't really stand on ceremony and uh, downs it very, very quickly. Kind of casps it <laughs> a little bit at the end. Uh, Alma kind of tisks and then uh, pours him another one. <clears throat> and then uh, raises her glass to all of you. Now, you did us a, a solid... And you've saved my poor dear Rex here. I don't know what this thing is, but it sounds like you've done what you needed to, and, and, and maybe it's not going to harm us anymore? He sounds kind of questioning. That one won't. I'm assuming there are no others. Or hoping. She looks a little nervous at the idea that there could be others out there, and Rex takes his drink and drinks it down immediately. The dark shade is gone. Uh, we will check things out and make sure that nothing more is amiss. <laughs> Alma refills his glass again and then gives him a pointed look. As I was saying, I want to raise this to all of you. and Thank you for it. And she then offers the, uh, the glass in, in toast and then proceeds to slowly drink it down. Rex, yeah. Rex tears his down his throat pretty quickly. Uh, I, what kind of sleight of hand roll was that? Because I am not getting drunk. Uh, it's only one shot. I get a fifteen. Uh, I <laughs> pretend to drink. Doesn't seem like Alma or Rex noticed. Um, does Annie? Uh, do Annie and Medrick take the uh, the drink? Oh, yeah. And we'll sip on it. Okay. Uh, it's a fairly crude, uh, but uh, surprisingly sweet peach schnapp. Or at least that's probably what it's meant to be. Uh, it's it's a little bit thinner than a than a schnapp would normally be, and a lot sweeter. It maybe have has sat for a while. The body the bottle looked fairly large, but it didn't seem to be any effort to carry, which pre was probably less than half full. Special occasions and that sort of thing. Uh, Rex is sitting there smacking his lips. It's a very strong alcohol, even for the small amount that's there. And kind of, actually, why don't each of you make a Constitution saving throw, just just for fun, to see how you react? Yeah, for you, Andy, it's 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 a pretty primitive brew, but you've had worse um, in in especially in your travels. Uh, well, I guess I'm uh, tired, and <laughs> but I've had worse. <laughs> uh, for you, uh, uh, Medric, you kind of throw it back, and it it sort of hits the back of your throat, and then you kind of involuntarily belch a little bit, and there's a little puff of smoke, uh, as as probably the 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 instinct or the in, ingraining of Ignis to get rid of poison through, through burning them out of the system <laughs> kicks in a little bit. Uh, and you, you've been a long game. <laughs> you, you find it kind of flowing through your, your, your muscles and where it interacts with the, the very deep cold that you've got, instead of entirely being comforting, it's more like uh, just now you have two extremes that are fighting <laughs> over your body right now. Um, uh, Rex uh, uh, kind of uh, coughs a little bit himself kind of looks a little sheepish. Hi, well, uh, and kind of slaps his legs, uh, his knees, and sits up, stands up. Well, 
If there's no more danger, best, best to get to work. Uh, if you'll follow me, and he, he leads whoever's going to go with him to help back to the barn. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a simple procedure, um, and you get the sense that he's actually done something like this fairly often. He kind of explains that you know normally you get this impression too that he's kind of talking out of a nervous habit, uh, kind of like trying to keep the, the the sound going all the time and kind of keep up the the uh, the, the monologue even if uh, the other person isn't responding. But you get the impression that normally when the slaughtering season comes around, he hires a few of the uh, folks from in town. They come in and do a lot of the heavy lifting. But he's done this for many, many years and when necessary and kind of shows off a, a, a dwarven made uh, cart that he's got, which has this sort of uh, winch arm on it and gets you to kind of help to scoop this up and tie the winch and the, 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 the ropes around the, the cow's legs and kind of use a ratcheting system to, to help move the cow. It's, it's a complicated and involved procedure, um, but it... it he doesn't. He seems to be moving a little stiffly and a little bit uh, uh, uncertainly, uh, even though every motion is certain. The strength isn't quite what it was, uh, or what it has been, and so leans upon whoever's helping your strength. Uh, and then the whole thing with the cart and all, he'll get Medric then to push the cart, and he leads you towards through the back of the barn to the other small building that's there, which turns out to be the the actual abattoir, but half of the room is cold storage uh, and you kind of just put it in there he hooks the the part where the legs have been uh, tied on to another chain and then just starts to ratchet it up so it's hanging up off the off the ground as well nothing else is in here because they weren't planning just to slaughter anything anytime soon but as you step in to and actually as both of you step in a little bit the cold is a little bit nippier and probably more so on on you uh medric and you can kind of feel the icy traces of where this thing had had uh in a weird way, cold burn the outside of your body, uh, leaving the flesh there with some markings. But after the procedure is done, uh, he, everybody gets back into the house. Uh, Alma has, uh, has uh, been making a sort of evening tea, uh, a different tea than what they were having earlier. There may or may not be a different kind of alcohol that's included in this tea as well uh, to fortify it for health reasons. <laughs> uh, and yeah, she proceeds to kind of keep bringing out food. Uh, it seems to be her natural reaction to, to a lot of nervousness is to, to make more things uh, until there's quite a, a, a heaving uh, pile of, of cheeses and some other breads. And there's a stew oh, that's been coming out of nowhere. Pie? What's that? Didn't she have a pie? She had pie. Yes. Yeah. Did I eat all of it? I forget. Not all of it, but uh, there's the opportunity now for certain. Um, but otherwise, it's just sort of light, light chat into the evening. Uh, Alma and Rex kind of regain some of their their form, some of their measure. Uh, kind of get the impression that the two of them spend a lot of time out here on the ranch alone with each other, and there's a sort of playful banter which keeps going back and forth between them. A little bit of teasing, a little bit of of uh of uh joking uh there's probably some of the jokes that rex has told a thousand times but he's very happy to find three people who haven't heard them all <laughs> and every once in a while there's just a a, a roll of the eyes or a sour uh, sound that comes from alma who's clearly heard them before um actually, time told them. <laughs> yeah and actually annie you notice at one point where she's kind of standing behind him and she's starting to pile up the dishes where she's mouthing the words as he's telling the joke. She's heard it so many times. <laughs> she even gets the timing right on this terrible joke. Do we know this is, or is it just Annie? <laughs> uh, just Annie at this particular moment. Um, but it's pretty clear that, that, you know, Rex is actually happy to have someone here. And they do talk, as, as he had noted before, that they do often bring in uh, other workers, depending on the season, uh, and that they're kind of wondering how many more seasons are left before they can still do this. Um, Alma keeps talking about him selling off all the herd and then complaining about the fact that, but come spring, he's bought a whole new herd. Uh, the recent uh, the recent difficulties have, have kind of limited them. Uh, they do, uh, Rex does say, like the, the, the cows that they lost were gone completely. They didn't just die. 
So it couldn't have been the the shadow itself which which killed them because if it killed them the same way she would he would have found the bodies mm. did they find blood or did the cows just like disappear just disappeared <laughs> they found no evidence of animal no evidence of blood no evidence of a fight they were just gone well, but they do roam out on the land quite quite a lot on their own and rex can't get out there all the time to to, to see after them but once the storm has settled, we'll go out and look to take a better look at the pasture. Okay. The storm seems to continue to rage on into the evening. Uh, looks like it's 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 on its way to settling, but it's also getting to be really late at night, and Rex is not keen to go out on the land right yet. Yeah, considering what just happened. <laughs> um, there are some predators that are out there at night. He doesn't graze the herds at night um, because of that. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So do you want to go out on your own, or do you insist that Rex go? What's your, your plan? I would wait till light. Yeah. Okay. Go I'm going to be very predatory right now. I'm feeling like hell. <laughs> and they have, you know, basically not exactly a separate bunkhouse. There's more of a of a of a separated part within this long house, which does have uh, a, a bed a bunk beds because they better than bed bugs. Better than bed bugs. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, Alma would insist there are no bed bugs. Uh, she's very thorough about cleaning. Uh, but it, it has the space to accommodate about eight people um, just staying there. So there's plenty of space, and, and uh, Alma insists, and in fact goes and gets some of the the, uh, the nicer blankets, having noted that some of the blankets that were on the, the beds right now were a little bit worn, and so she goes to the closet and, and pulls out another set of, uh, of handmade blankets. Um, you kind of get the impression that she made them herself, although she doesn't. She doesn't brag or anything like that, but there's a lot of pride. And she makes some fine work. Oh, thank you. My mother taught me. My aunt would not have done better. Oh, your aunt? Do I know your aunt? No, no, I imagine not. Oh. No, I sound like a priest, don't I? <laughs> You're a little <laughs> Irish there, buddy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. So, are any plans for the evening? Um, maybe have another slice of pie. <laughs> maybe another glass of tea. Annie and would offer to help with the cleaning after we've eaten. She doesn't turn it away. In fact, it, it's come kind of almost not entirely expected uh, of the guests, but at the same time, you, you get the feeling that they're they're starting to treat you a little bit like they would their regular uh, workers. Who take yeah. part and work in all parts of the farm, um, but yeah, um, she, the water is surprisingly hot, and while her fingers are are kind of a little knotted and gnarled, uh, she doesn't seem to be that slow at all. Uh, that strong sort of farm hand uh, or or farm worker uh, uh, sense comes from her. Uh, Rex takes an early evening. Uh, in fact, he takes it earlier than even leaving the room as he's sitting by the fire and somewhat starting to snore. Mm. Um, Silas will help uh, uh, some basically using prestidigitation to just uh, go over and clean stuff and uh, remove the dust. Um, but at some point, if he gets a moment to chat with Medrick, um, he's asked... Does your, does your God always hurt you when you have, try to help others? Most of the time. And you accept that? It depends. Sometimes if it's an action that comes just easily and automatically to me, nothing happens. But I haven't been in touch with a flame keeper for too, too long, but from what I deduced from speaking to him or to, what was the flame keeper guy or girl i forget uh, here it's a her okay mixing it up with the other city in the other game 
pay no attention to this note. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 yeah. Whenever I discuss with the flamekeeper, it seems that Ignis does so to strike his followers. And I, I guess I am okay with it. I mean, where I grew up, scars were a thing of honor. And it's like once a few burns here and there. And I'm lucky I didn't get stabbed too much in the war. You know, whatever did happen in the war. But... And you're willing to deal with the pain so that you can help others? Oh, yes. And help my friends. And help purge this land of the darkness. From what, I, from what, I, from what I'm told and what I believe, it's going to hurt less and less over time. Although these past few days, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I'll talk to the flamekeeper about it. It feels like it was a little extra painful. Hmm. I mean, I was told by the flamekeeper of some followers of Ignis who can light themselves on fire and suffer no ill effects. It seems hard to believe, but that would be impressive. Oh, my God. Okay, I understand. I understand where you're coming from. That would be impressive. Oh, God. And um, there is a cost in most things, and to have, have access to Ignis is more powerful magics, I suppose. Yes, there's always a cost. That young lady. I don't... The ghost we were talking to? Yes. I don't understand any more of what is going on than anyone else does, but... I get the feeling... Whatever... Whatever was happening that we can't remember... I don't think she was on the same side as you. Do, like a player me knows that her reaction, like when she saw the, the yeah. symbol. Yeah, well, Silas uh, would say she seemed she seemed wary of what you represent. Yeah, like when she said she was reacting, she me, but then she should because I helped save her. And, and that, was, that was weird. The people who she seemed to be describing the ruin of her temple, and it sounded perhaps like your uh, and the right word kin would not be the right word. Uh, <laughs> I mean, followers your, or, or yeah, your uh, your folk, perhaps, may have had something to do with it, or maybe they came in after. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. She did mention somebody lit a fire in the temple, then, it, and that it wasn't loud, but anybody can light a fire. Yes, but. You're kind to do it very, very well. Thanks. I mean, not that. I mean, I don't know what that it. Was a legit, like appreciation. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know what it means. Uh, just that—that that was my impression. Uh, so, when we go there. Um, perhaps, I don't know, be aware around you if there are others like her, maybe they will not feel quite so well disposed. Yeah, yeah be careful. And uh, I, I just, well, I haven't been a follower of Agnes for very long, but I can't recall of Ignis having any 
polar opposites or enemies. No, me neither. But something very big just happened that none of us can remember. I wonder if it had anything to do with that war. Anyway, I look forward to seeing the temple. Hmm. It should be most interesting. Um, no, I just, uh, I just wanted to check in with you. Um, I have not admittedly dealt much with, uh, you don't remember the flame keeper's name in town. I mean, yeah. um, it's in page one. I think all of my paperwork I must have taken to to uh, to my room, and then I forgot about it. Yeah, I don't know if she was formerly. I think I ran through the names, but we haven't actually met her. But it's Flamekeeper Nora Tidewell. Tidewell, that's it. Because remember, it's close to uh, uh, Nora Tyrell. Ty Tyrell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, because I'm what I'm presuming that Silas, having been in the town for like eighteen years. Uh, would know of her and has probably met her, but uh, oh yeah, yeah, he probably does not hang out much with uh, the local uh, clerics. And and the flamekeeper keeps to herself. Um, yeah. Doesn't just generally venture that far into the town all that much. Uh, kind of treated with a little bit of suspicion. Um, most of the Ignians tend to get that response in many places they go, uh, but is also involved with some of the town ceremonies. Um, from time to time, so uh, and is one of the people who might marry people or who would oversee funerals, uh, would also be sometimes there to bless the feasts, that sort of thing. Um, and certainly, you know, when there bless are the what's that, bless thy barbecue, <laughs> kind of, yeah, you know, ain't no barbecue like an Indian barbecue. Um, but yeah, to, also kind of treated as, as a little bit weird. Um, just because, again, the Ignians are kind of treated that way most places. Yeah, anyone who goes around doing harm to themselves uh, by their own will probably gets a little bit of a side eye. It's definitely a strange, uh, strange thing from the outside. Go ahead. For that reason, Medric would usually keep his amulet like kind of hidden until there's like combat or an actual reason to heal somebody. Yep. I mean... It's, it's hard as an Ignian to kind of hide who you are just because there's all kinds of side effects. Yeah. <laughs> well, once people know, they know. <laughs> yeah. I will say it is an unusual lifestyle, but it seems to serve you well. No, I agree entirely to, to both statements. Uh, then I go back to, uh, I'm presuming, actually, I'm probably like cleaning dishes because I was going and, and like removing the uh, the dirt from them with uh, prestidigitation. I, I kind of I kind of imagine this uh, this discussion happening right by the fire and there's sort of the main pots to be cleaned out, which are usually the most strenuous and annoying and, and uh, elbow breaking kind of things to do. And you're there by the fire chatting with Medric and kind of. Uh, the flames kind of bring this conversation to mind, but also the magic makes this a lot easier to do. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, by the sink, uh, Annie and Alma are are busy, kind of doing the the regular uh, cooking or cleaning, I should say, of the of the cooking dishes and stuff. And uh, she kind of turns to you, Annie, uh, and says, "So, so where is it you're from, then, dear?" I, the player, forget what island I'm from. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you just came off a boat, really. Um, yeah. Uh, funny, because we talked about this. Um, hmm. I'll say where I'm where I'm from anyway. It's okay. it's another island. Yeah, I don't remember which it was, but yeah, there's some that are a ways away, a little ways away. Yeah. I've never been there. Well, to be honest, I've never left this island, but. I hear it's nice. I'm um, I'm very lucky to be able to travel. Why would you come here, though? I mean, there's nice parts of Eskis. I don't know if Aethwater is one of them, but you know, there are nice places. 
I I wanted to see somewhere new. Oh. And it was the first boat leaving. Well, welcome to ask us anyway, if no one said it already. I'm from... I think Silas was the first person to, to tell me that, so. He seems nice. So far. I, for one, am happy that you're here. I wish the circumstances were better. I worry about Rex sometimes. He's getting old. Even older today, I think. He seems to be stubborn. Oh, that he is. That he is. He doesn't listen to me as much anymore. I mean, he listens. And sometimes I can get a word in edgewise. But maybe you could talk to him. Maybe. I mean, you all did save his life today, so that might carry a little weight. And you want him to retire solo farm and you guys to move somewhere else, or...? That sounds pretty good. I mean, uh, I'll keep supporting everything we do here. It's always been part of my dream, too, but... Well, it gets to be a bit much in the winter times. Maybe take someone on full-time here instead of just seasonal. If we could afford to, or find the person who's willing to put up with us for a whole year. Are you moving on? Would you be willing to stay? I have things that I need to do. In the places you need to see. In places I need to see. And I have my own responsibilities. Well... You'll always have a place to stay here if you want. Well, thank you. I'll, I'll mention it. Maybe you, you could find someone to work for room and board and inherit the place. I don't know. We've never had kids. And that was always the thought, but maybe. If I had a child, I hope she'd be just like you. Maybe well, not thanks. as eager to go away and travel, though. I think that's what my parents say, too. <laughs> they must be worried sick. Probably. Probably. You don't know? No. She kind of leans in conspiratorially toward, toward you. You didn't run away from home, did you? I mean, someone knows that I left. Well. Wow. Not the first time. I hope your parents aren't terrible people. Oh, they're not. Oh, well. Youth. I remember it once. When I was young, maybe about your age, I ran away too, sort of. Went to the big city. Pit of June. It's not too far away from here, really, but it's a world away in what I'm used to. Better than staying in the Earthwater when I was young, anyway. Too many fishers. Fair enough. No, I just needed something different. Wanted to learn things my way instead of learning from books. Good for you. Person should take that sort of initiative and run as far as you can while you can. Exactly. Or I'm tied down to what my parents want me to do, and ultimately what I do want to do. I would have... my own way. Sorry, go ahead. Just my own way. Perfect. You do you. But there will come a day when you'll have to make a choice, just as I did one fateful day, when a smelly, terribly mannered, but somewhat amusing farmhand wandered into town with a whole bunch of cows to sell. And at that point, Sounds like a story. I made a choice. I can't say I regret it. Although he does snore a lot. And in the background, sawing several logs is indeed Rex. <laughs> kind of collapsed in this, this big comfy chair that's, that's uh, seen many, many days right beside the fire. The evening passes. 
Alma is quite impressed by the magics that Silas is able to bring to bear to to uh, clean the dishes. Uh, would that I had someone like you around when we are feeding the bigger feeds. You're muted. Everyone else is muted. You're muted. <laughs> it comes in useful uh, at home. Indeed. So, well, you know how uh, <laughs> raising a family is. I don't, but I feel like the people we've had around in the summers and the falls have been like a family. Well, you have had to raise... Uh, I nod over to her, her husband. <laughs> uh, let's just say we've kind of raised each other in that case. He's an all right uh, sort. But tell me, and she kind of leans in and whispers a little bit. Do you think that his, his hair is going to go back to, or is it all white forever now? I don't, I'm afraid I do not know. Um, I suspect it may be that way for a good long time. Well, Sometimes the supernatural can change people. Even just a, a casual brush with it and leave its mark. And she looks kind of distant for a moment. That's true. I wish I'd mentioned the thing earlier. You can only do what you can do. Hmm. You sound like my father. May his soul be resting. May they all. Did you say your last name was Marsh? Y yes. You're not related to the other Marshes in town, are you? Y yes, I am. Oh. McLean. Oh. I... Pardon me, I, I'm, I'm just a little surprised. You don't, um... You don't act like them. Not that there's anything... I mean... They're fine? They're not... People, people... As you might say, they prefer to just stick to themselves. Yes, well, I imagine it was, it was rather difficult growing up there with them. Yes, it, it had its... Uh, peculiarities I can see it certainly was different from those in town uh, seem to have been raised but it has its upsides as well as its downsides I tried to do right by my clan and the town well from what I've heard the the, the marshes are respected. If a little bit um, curious. They're a bit strange. I didn't want to say it, but you seem nice. Well, thank you. I try to be. Now, I'd better get Rex off to bed or... He'll wake up with a sore back and be all cranky about it and tell me, why didn't I go make him go to sleep in his bed? <laughs> uh, we shall try not to disturb anyone. The beds are made. There's, there's plenty here to eat still if you're hungry. None of you feel necessarily all that hungry, given that she's been literally trying to feed you for the last several hours. But... It reminds me of my great-grandma that they were just like, oh, would you like more? No, no, I'm good putting more on the plate anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, no, I'm yeah. good means I just want one more plate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but she does rouse Rex, who wakes surprisingly easily at her touch. She touches him on the side of the cheek, and his his eyes kind of shoot open and uh, and 
first thing he sees is her smiling face, uh, and he rouses from the chair. A little bit of difficulty. Um, you can kind of see that the day's events, not only visibly with the, the hair going white, but also physically, uh, seem to have really done a number on him. Uh, he moves very, very stiffly, uh, kind of grasping on his spine uh, as, he's, as he's walking along. You can hear the, the audible crack of, of several joints uh, kind of coming back into motion and back into straightness when he, he steps up. And Alma leads him. Uh, he leans a little heavier on her than you might have expected uh, to make their way off to their, their room in the back, their private chambers. Leaves you there with the fire still burning bright and uh, you have the evening to yourselves or you can call it an evening and get some rest yourselves if you like. Can I tell if Rex, like, uh, can, can I tell if he's at, if he actually aged or if his hair just changed colors? Make a perception check. <laughs> or, perception med- or medicine or if you have it trained. Yep, and it's better than perception. <laughs> I guess it's uh, kind of dark and I'm too tired to make I mean you haven't known him for very long Um, the the hair going white you have heard of that happening when someone gets severely scared Uh, and he was already a fairly old guy so maybe it's just because he literally like Alma was saying he was sleeping in that chair and that was causing him to his limbs to to creak and moan, uh, but he does seem a little slower moving than when you met him the first time on the, the porch earlier that day. Okay. So the rest of you turn in for the night? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll find a comfortable corner to... Uh... Well, she's made up uh, beds in the bunk beds. Yeah. In the, the, the Any shared quarters. Any of the excited... She has never slept in bunk beds before. She is totally sleeping on the top bunk. Okay. <laughs> Medrick's feet are probably like hanging out by like six inches over the end. <laughs> they definitely look like they're made for average sized people. Um, and it's a little bit uh, difficult. I mean, Annie is also tall. She's like five nine. Yeah, you're, you're both finding it a little bit uh, uh, cramped. Um, the, the wood of these beds is ancient it's it's you get the feeling that they probably built this room when they built this cabin uh and they look like they've been they've been well maintained they've got that that very soft patina of having been uh in service and 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 touched by many hands over many many years uh and and comfort um they have strong uh wood in them they're a little bit stiff uh with a a feather packed uh, topping on top, and uh, does Silas stay in the in that room, or is, is he also is he actually just staying um, in the corner? Somewhere? Well, if she made up three beds, he would stay in one of them. Yeah, uh, basically there are two chambers with two double beds or two bunk beds in each room, and you guys, uh, the 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 slightly uh, sweet smell of the smoke from the fire kind of wafts through the air. The rooms are are nice and warm. The rain drops from the vicious storm it was to a steady patter overhead, and you all find yourselves asleep. Annie would go in the other room. Okay. Does Medrick or Silas take a uh, a top part of the bunk bed, or both on the bottom? I'll take the bottom part. I'm not even trying to squeeze into the top part. Okay. <laughs> I'll take the top. Okay. Annie is just too excited. <laughs> It's like we've already dealt with the monster in the shadow, so it's like I, I can leave my feet hanging over the edge. No shadows is going to get them. <laughs> Could have each of you make a wisdom saving throw, please. Sorry, a charisma saving throw. Uh, Ooh. Uh, Five. Ooh, okay. 23. Wow. Whoa, okay. <laughs> All right. I'm too tired to be charismatic. Somebody speaks to me and I'm just like, 
I was thinking, Medrick's got a plus one charisma? Oh, wait, yeah. proficiency bonus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he might not have the training in it. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> oh, proficiency bonus. I forgot to add it. No. So be... uh, only if you're trained yeah. in it. It would be a five. <laughs> I think, well, I think clerics get uh, wisdom and... Yeah, it is charisma. I just forgot to add my proficiency yeah, bonus. That makes sense. But okay. it's still in that one. <laughs> but it's still in that one. Yeah. All right. Medrick, your eyes are heavy. It's been a difficult day. You can feel the your your body starting to knit itself back together, feeling some of the weariness of the day starting to fade a little bit. And then like a sharp crack of lightning. It all seems to spike at once and your body feels like it's torn and twisted and, and separated into smaller and smaller pieces. You feel like you're being stretched over a rack and then you start to twist and turn and then find yourself at sea on the boat ahead. There are shouts from dozens of other boats as they're all making their plans to head towards the battle. You can see your, your colleagues there, everyone eager to get into the fight. The rain is pouring across in sheets, almost, almost horizontal, heavy and blowing and cold and obscuring, worse than a fog crossing over everything in front of you. In that fog, you see vague outlines and shouts go up from all the boats around. Fires are lit as some of the Igneans get ready for battle. There are other Kamar there, some more experienced than, the, than you. Those ones bring out small bottles of oil, which they ceremonially pour over their shoulders and over their back and light themselves on fire. They seem ready for battle, ready for anything. A deep horn is sounded. It resonates through everything. It is the, the, the battle cry you've been waiting for. Shouts go up among all the ships. And then ahead of you, there is land. The boats come to a jarring halt up on a beach. And all of you jump and run and head towards the center of this island. The horn blows once again and then is cut off mid-sound. And then you can hear the sound of tearing and crashing. And overhead, you see the trace of a um, shape, massive, 50, 100 feet tall. It's hard to tell because it keeps undulating and changing. Large tentacle-like shapes outlined as darker gray in the gray of the surrounding fog and rain. Screams go up now. Not battle cries, but of those who are suffering under its blows. You wake up the next day. Your body is covered in a cold sweat. You have suffered one level of exhaustion. Steve is supposed to do the opposite. <laughs> you are restored of your wounds. Okay. And your, your spells and all that have been restored. But you tossed and turned all night long. So hopefully whoever was in the bunk bed ahead of me isn't also feeling this exhaustion. <laughs> make a make an insight check. Red. Inside. Oh. Much nice. better. Nice. As the dream begins to fade in those first few seconds when your eyes flutter open, one image sticks with you. As you were on the beach with your fellow soldiers, as you were charging into battle, there was a figure standing there. And you realize that figure wasn't there. That figure has never been there. Mm -hmm. It was tall and kind of gangly, of dark shadow, pierced with tiny little starlight dots, watching, observing, and you might even say, enjoying the nightmare. 
and you're left with that figure in your mind. You cannot see any details inside this deep, dark hood other than two lights, glowing eyes, shining like diamonds. Does this shadow seem similar at all to the one we dispatched to the other or last night? That one had no features. Yeah. It would be kind of the the equivalent of seeing a shadowed hooded form mm -hmm. in the nightmare or seeing just the hood in the being. You wake up the next day. All of you wake up. It's warm. It's a little bit smoky. The fire went out in the middle of the night. It's quiet outside. The rain has stopped. The storm has passed over. You can already smell coffee being brewed, bacon being uh, cooked. You can hear the, the light song as Alma sings to herself. And it's an old tale. An old song. Something Silas is probably more familiar with than the other two. An old song of the sea. Of lost loves. Of distant memories. And of a sort of melancholy missing of your childhood. It's a weird song to be singing in the morning. But it does have a sort of easy to remember refrain. Or easy to, to, to fall into sound. I was singing along with her. Uh, she stops when she realizes someone's singing with her and then starts up again, smiling, as you both take up the song. It's very familiar. Um, I don't have a name for it at the moment. Uh, and it has several names, probably. It's not really a pub standard. It's, it's, it's a little too sad for that. It's melancholy. Um, but uh, the both of you uh, finish the song and uh, she kind of uh, smirks at you. I'm not surprised someone from Aethwater knows that song. It's an old one. It has a lot of meaning. I don't know what made me think of it. It's like I heard it in my dreams or something. Oh, well. Rex gets up a little bit later. This morning, Medric, you notice very definitely the deeper uh, bags under his eyes, the way his flesh seems to sag a little bit, the slower movement, the somewhat stooped back, and still the very pure white hair. In the light of day, it's clear to see. He's definitely aged since yesterday. Can I tell, like, roughly how much he's aged? Uh, not at this point. Okay. Noticeably but it could be anywhere from one to 10 years at this particular age. Old farmers age quickly too. But he sits down at the table. Breakfast is served. It's fairly early in the morning still. Medrick, you find yourself probably in, involuntarily yawning still. Yeah, and requesting like second and third and seventh like helpings of coffee. <laughs> Hey, it sounds like real life. She puts on a second pot. It's a it's a very dark, bitter brew. It's got a little bit of uh, grit in the bottom of the well as well, the way she makes it. And uh, you probably recognize this kind of brew as one that it's the same sort of brew that they would make at sea for mm -hmm. soldiers. Uh, not something you would have expected necessarily at a farmhouse, but maybe you should have. Yeah. Stacks of pancakes. Some... Uh, Probably bacon, sausage, that sort of thing. I don't want to describe the whole breakfast. I'm getting hungry. Yeah, I see. Does bacon remove exhaustion? <laughs> <laughs> it has many magical powers, but that unfortunately is not one of them. Yeah. <clears throat> uh... Hey, Rex, are you feeling all right? Nope. nope. I feel like crap. Same. Well, I was nice and eager, and eager to go to sleep, and then these fucking nightmares kept me up. 
Topic language uh, uh, Alma snaps you across the hand with a, a wooden spoon. <laughs> Ow. Mind your language when you're in my home, son. Right, right. My bad. But yes, heckin nightmares. Tossing and turning and well, let, let's just say I'm grateful for this coffee. Um, all three of you make an insight check. The bacon's really, really good. Both of you definitely notice the bacon is really, really good so far. <laughs> All right, I'm at disadvantage, aren't I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The pancakes also taste really good. Actually, with the. No, 12 is the best. Yeah, sorry. Oh, wow. That was like my low disadvantage roll. <laughs> <laughs> Are these edibles? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that kind of pancake. Uh, it's a little grassy and kind of rank. No. Um, after a little while, uh, Rex uh, kind of breathes deeply. Well, I got to go tend to the farm. It's already getting pretty late and the cows will be angry with me. Are you three sticking around? Well, we were going to go see the... Uh, where the cows were going missing. Oh, right, right. And maybe if goes again, go to the temple she was referring to. What's that? You know, the thing we talked about last night. Did you oh, we did, we did talk to him about that. What, did, you, did you talk to Rex and Alma about the ghost, the temple, and all that? I thought we did. No, we just I, kind of said, it's all like, done. Because we did say, like, the one who did it was being possessed and the shadows was being dispatched. So that we did say, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a that was possessed by a creature. Okay. Well, I don't know why my cows have used the temple, but hopefully you can find the bastards. And Alma snaps them across the back of the head with a spoon. Language. No, kind of like snicker. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I know it's not just me. <laughs> And he kind of heaves himself up off the table, quite noticeably slower. Well, cows won't milk themselves. Chickens won't gather their own eggs. I think maybe, dear, you could do that today. Alma kind of nods, as I usually do. And he uh, says, well, if you're, if you're going to be sticking around, I'll put you to work. If you're not sticking around, may you do well. And I hope you come back soon. We'll do our best. And there's a, a slight hesitation as he grabs his straw hat, heads out in the sunny morning, and heads over to the barn. So. What is up? <laughs> yeah, are we looking for some cows? <laughs> <laughs> You did talk about potentially going out to the area where the cows had been grazing yesterday. Uh, presumably, he's actually going to let the cows out to graze. Maybe not in the same spot, but uh, Rex. Yeah, we were going to go see where the, the cows had been going missing to see if there was anything else causing harm to the cows. Okay. But we didn't want to do it when predators and shit was out there. Right, right. And Medrick was holding on by a thread. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So are you guys heading out in that direction? You can ask Rex for directions. He can let you know which, which field it was up. Yep. And before. Yep. Yeah. yeah. If he can let us know where to, where to go. Um, actually, we might want to like, Take a quick look at the barn to see if our ghost friend is back. But uh... okay, before you are able to leave the house, uh, Alma stops all of you, uh, and then hands each of you a rolled up package, rolled up in a table, uh, not a tablecloth, uh, a hand cloth. Uh, if you're going to be traveling, you're going to get hungry, and she's made you all sandwiches, presumably oh. earlier before you even got up. Uh, some cold ham sandwiches. 
insist on taking a look at it. Uh, thank you for your uh, uh, your gift, ma'am. Now you just find the bastards. And she kind of um, winks at Medric when she swears. Right quick, I, uh, once everybody else is out, I'm going to pop back into the house and say, oh, I forgot something. And I want to go ask Elma, how much is it here to hire someone for the inn? Well, as I said, we usually hire by the season, usually about uh, 25 to 50 gold, depending on what they're doing for the whole season. We hire six to five, uh, six to eight people. For one person for the year, then. For a whole year? Would... Um, I suppose we'd be paying, I mean, we want to put them to work, so probably 80 to 100, depending on who they are. Okay. Just wanted to know. All right. Well, we have a little and... save to hire some people on, and we will be doing it soon. Good. Uh, and I go join the others. Okay. Um, the the other two um, make your way over to the barn, and not long after, Annie joins you as well. Inside, um, sitting on a on a three legged stool, is uh, Rex who's milking some of the, the, the cows that need milking. Doesn't seem to be any sign of your friend from the night before. And in fact, you, you get the impression that there's a sense of familiarity about this place and about the routine that Rex is going through, that he seems to start entri entirely calm. And despite some of the uh, moments where he have to, has to kind of pull back, stretch out his now a lot more arthritic hands uh, and get back to it, he seems pretty calm about the whole deal. When you ask about the farm or about the area, he kind of gestures up behind the farm uh, about uh, about a mile in that direction. There's a beautiful field that gets a lot of sunlight during the day uh, and that has a, a natural growing clover, which is great for the both <coughs> the cows and the sheep to graze on uh, every uh, five or six days. So he has uh, about you know five or six different locations he, he rotates through. And this one is usually one that he waits to, for it to really grow up um, for them to graze on. And it's basically just a mile up a, a slight incline to a nice big uh, clearing up that way. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> no, thank all of you. And may you catch the bastards. And he kind of looks around. Alma's not seeing him, so... Seems we'll to be do our best. Safe for the moment. And uh, I suppose when we were moving the cow to the uh, butcher freezer the night before, did I, did I notice anything specific about where the cow got killed last night? About where the cow got killed? Yeah, like was, was there like any special markings or disruptions in the ground aside from where the cow fell over? I'm no. just wondering like, if I go to the field, if I should look for anything similar aside from. A cow falling okay. over. Okay, let's make a retroactive investigation roll. Okay. Oh, God. Intelligence, isn't it? <laughs> and that's a disadvantage. <laughs> it is. Actually, no, because no. this would have been before you went to sleep. Oh, okay. So that's a seven. <laughs> well, okay. It's only so much better <clears throat> for you. Uh, aside from some of the... the the straw that it landed on being a little chilled, not really all that much. Uh, and then you kind of realize like, you know, this is inside a barn and nothing of what's inside a barn is going to be out on the, the, the field. So it'll be hard to find any evidence other than, you know, if the cow landed and fell over, the grass might be pressed down. So yeah, we should all look for a sideways cow prints, y'all. It's like the cow, but like if you're looking at a picture of a cow from sideways, that picture, but on the ground. Uh, Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you climb the hill. Um, it's a it's a nice, gentle, soft uh, climb. Uh, again, uh, it has kind of 
both uh, intentionally been chosen because he was running his herd over this, but also you get the impression that he's been farming here for a long time and probably dozens upon dozens, if not a hundred herd have, well, maybe not a hundred, but dozens upon dozens of herds have run across this, this same area. So whatever, whatever uh, roughness there had been in the landscape was smoothed out by hundreds of hooves. Uh, making it uh, kind of a soft, easy flow. The grass here becomes very uniform. You can see where he had been grazing them uh, only a few days ago. Uh, and uh, so there's lots of little nips and uh, bites out of the grass. There's a few cow pies to, to avoid here and there. Uh, the clouds have cleared off today, leaving a little bit of a, uh, a hazy morning uh, as some of the, the humidity from the last night still being burned off. And you start rising up this hill, and the clearing starts getting wider and wider until uh, at its end, it's probably 500 feet wide at this point, at the very crest of the hill. The trees have all been moved back. There's a, a rock pile in the center of this, uh, which is probably where, uh, over the many seasons, uh, Rex has actually moved whatever offending rocks might be there to create a little bit of, of, of a space around the last remaining trees. And in the center of the rock pile is indeed a, a very old, gnarled, twisted tree. Uh, probably, you know, um, I think, Annie, you can kind of see that this would be one of those trees that kids you knew would have been all over this. It's a perfect climbing tree. It's a place where imaginary forts are built and where people can hide from unruly parents with all their demands. Uh, and never be seen with a thick foliage around it and beautiful, tr beautiful, uh, 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 beautiful branches. Uh, even as you get closer, it's one of the landmarks that that Rex pointed out uh, as one of the central spots. Um, and from there, that's where he would that would be where he would survey the the herd when he was with them. Um, and in fact, you kind of see the tree, and as you kind of come close to it, you notice the overgrown but still visible carving on the side uh, which is a little heart with R, R plus A on the side of it uh, probably there for a few generations around you is the wide open fields on the far sides by the forest there is a little bit of a fence that's been built up um, a wooden fence just enough to keep the cows from being too encouraged to run off into the woods Although the woods are pretty thick around here, they would be hard pressed to get very far. Start to look around for some evidence. We'll take investigation rolls or nature rolls, depending on what you're doing. Do we see any cow prints? Well, let's see what the rolls are like. This one will be a disadvantage for you. Do I have nature? I, oh, that's also minus one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look real close from some sideways, like for some sideways coverings. All right. <laughs> well, that's an 11. Oh, there you go. Um, you're distracted a little bit, Medric, because you find some, some cow prints. And then you find some more. And there's some over here, too. And, and some by these rocks. And you're pretty sure that a cow once put a foot on this rock. And then they probably stepped in a cow pie, which is why there's still a little ring of brown around it. And as you move closer to examine it, you can smell that it was probably pretty fresh a few days ago. For uh, Sideways, damn it. <laughs> for uh, Silas and uh, Annie, you start looking around. And it's pretty clear to see that the, the herd was happily grazing here. Uh, the grasses are still fairly well cut down, starting to grow up in spurts here and there. As you start to walk around the, the periphery of the area and take a look at the fence, um, Silas, you notice, first of all, that um, there's a spot where if you're standing there, the way that the hill behind you rolls can't actually be seen from the center point where uh, Rex normally sits to watch over his, his herd. It just happens to be a hump of land right there that perfectly kind of hides this little hollow. 
Um, you get the feeling that it, it probably rained out a little bit a uh, long time ago and never got naturally built up. It's not a huge hillock, but it does kind of give that that bit of, of, uh, of cover. And Annie, not far from there, you're kind of walking around the periphery and you notice that a part of the fence uh, has been pulled apart. It's put back into place right now, but it could be easily, even with one person, pulled apart so that you could easily move uh, cattle through this area. <coughs> um, mm. I will definitely point that out. I found a hidey hole. Um, I don't care. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check that spot behind the the little hill, and just see if there's any evidence of someone having been in wait there. Um, as you're gonna look around, there's a, a distinct set of footprints in a cow pie. Um, they're uh, kind of smaller and shorter, definitely smaller and shorter than Rex's are, and they're humanoids. So they're definitely not a cow's. Someone was squatting right there, waiting for an opportunity. Yeah, it looks like it's cow thieves. Do the shoes match anything that Alma might have been wearing? Like, does she ever watch the cows? I don't know. You weren't really paying a lot of attention to Alma's feet, necessarily. No, I, but they do look to be fairly small feet. I don't imagine that there would be much of a reason for her to hide here, though. And judging from the way the imprint goes, it looks like they were putting a lot of weight on their heels, kind of like they were squatted down. Um, yeah, I think someone was here waiting to steal some of his herd. Kind of looking around, you also notice where there's a, a small rock with a bit of cow pie on it, where probably, as you're reconstructing the scene in your mind, where they'd walked a few steps and then realized they'd been standing in a cow pie and went to scrape it off, leaving that, that evidence behind. Mm -hmm. Annie, you're examining this bit of fence, and it was lashed together, and then a wooden peg was used to, normally would be used to attach the fence pieces together. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks as though the peg was broken and now mm -hmm. just a thin piece of, of uh, branch has been used that could easily be pulled out of the way, kind of like a key, and then the whole part would swing away easily. And then you could close it back up again. No one would notice unless they look closely. Mm. On the other side, you can see that the ground, um, which is uh, at this point... Uh, kind of a mossy surface there's a little bit of dry I think we said it was spring yeah so it'd be dry leaves from last year and you can see that they were turned up and disturbed hmm. so I was gonna look over and say I think we're looking for some utter bastards <laughs> that feels like a great place to stop actually for the night <laughs> Oh, I killed the game. <laughs> We're going for no, a little bit shorter time. What is going on is just like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you go. Slow clap necessary. Yes, I think that. Uh, I think that's very good. <laughs> well, um, we've had a fight. We've had a bit of, of role playing. We've had weirdness happen. I'd say we call it a session. Uh, I am going a little bit shorter these days just because I feel like I have enough energy for a couple of hours. That's about it. Uh, we've been gone for three. Thankfully, uh, the technical issues didn't delay us too badly, but unfortunately they did. Uh, however, uh, we'll continue to do this on a regular basis. That's the idea. Um, and hopefully no more technical issues. That'd be fun. Hey, Marie, hey. how can people find out more and join in on this crazy business? Uh, we have a Facebook page. It is Legend of the Drowned Isles. I try to post, I forget. But I, I really try to post when we're when we're filming, uh, and we have a Facebook group where we talk more. It's more interactive, uh, which is Watchers of the Drowned Isles. You can find it through the page, and someone else should take over the YouTube stuff. <laughs> uh, does that, does uh, uh, Nax or Pat want to jump in, or I can jump in? I'm not very good at YouTube, but all I know is that if you hit the bell icon, then you like 
when there's new things that happen, you get notifications so you can keep up with us. <laughs> and subscribe uh, and comment. Absolutely. Uh, on on all these places, uh, I I have my own my own uh, Nick on there. E N C A F one and Caf one on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, and just about everywhere else as well. You're welcome to to to, to join up. Uh, if you do go to YouTube, um, I'd love to know uh, how the quality fared this week. We did while I did have some technical issues in the beginning. Nothing seems to have crashed. Knocking on wood, nothing seems to have stopped or hung up or anything, which I'm very happy about. Uh, I am a little bit behind on the YouTube versions. I've put up session zero. Session one is on is coming up very shortly, and this one will come up shorter, uh, quicker this week because hey, technically we have a holiday this week. Um, hey, you. We do gather on Twitch. The idea is to gather on Sundays at four o'clock Atlantic, going for three or four hours, depending on right now. Currently three hours, uh, and yeah, I hope uh, you guys had fun. You know your crazy discovery of Sedona and. You know, the cow thieves are underway. Uh, I want to thank you guys all for joining me and for playing. Shadow and, uh, and Shadow Cow Thieves. Shadow Cow Thieves. There you go. Watch out for Shadow Cows. That'll be the coming <laughs> up next. Thank you very much, guys, for playing. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, is it Sunday yet? No, I don't, I don't think I want to steal that one. No. <laughs> Join us next time in the world of Omisha.